Hi guys, welcome back to Blue Moon Rising TV. This is a new strand we're going to try out today. It's called Blue Moon Rising TV Fan Cam Reactions, okay? And what we're going to do, it's all in the name. It's quite literal. It's very literal. It's very self-explanatory. If you don't understand it now, I don't think you will <laughs> ever. Um, so we're going to take some of the fan cams from the weekend. We're going to watch them back and we're going to react to them now after the dust has settled a little bit. So the weekend's results, obviously, um, not the best. Not the worst, I guess, as well. We drew Arsenal 2-2, and we have a wide range of reactions. In fact, this week is probably some of the most um, ex extreme reactions, yeah, maybe. A, a lot of kind of uh, post-match um, frustration, and a lot, of, a lot of things were said in the heat of the moment, always, as, as is always the best time That's to the get... the beauty uh, of uh, yeah, fan cams. Exactly. So we thought it'd be a good idea to discuss those stronger opinions that people possibly don't get off the chest after the, 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 uh, it's all settled down after a game. So yeah. it feels like a good time to... Go through that. Yeah, so the, I think we've got, we picked three here and they represent sort of the, the two extremes and uh, one in the middle as well. So the first one we're going to come to, we'll play now, is uh, a kid called Tim, I think. Tom. Tom, that's it. <laughs> Tim, Tom, Harry. Um, Tom, and he, um, a lot of people were quite inspired by this. He's defending Pellegrini, he gave a message to Pellegrini. Let's just watch it now and then we'll, uh, we'll react to it as the title goes. <laughs> I just want to say a massive thank you to Pellegrini in there. It made my blood boil that fans were booing. That's disgraceful. What he's done for this club is amazing. Like a Champions League semi-final, look where we were a few years ago. I mean, I was born in the, in the era where we were good, but booing after a Champions League semi-final and a League Cup victory. Yeah, yeah. Or, like, unless he's like six. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. <laughs> he's, and he's not six. <laughs> yeah, he's very overgrown for yeah. a six-year-old. Um, no, in, in fairness, this got quite well received, didn't it? Yeah, Tom, it did. Here. Um, just said that. Um, and there's a few things here. So he was saying that he was angry that people were booing. I think first things first, we need to point out that we don't think people were booing yeah, Pellegrini, there was, right? I think there was a lot of booing towards the frustration of the game. At the end, there was a, a brief uh, round of uh, booing, but it kind of it more signalled the fact that we dropped points, and it was a frustration as opposed to a dig at Pellegrini. And yeah. there was a bit of booing for a certain substitution for a certain player, yeah. which is probably uh, I think that once again was just frustration because. Um, uh, it, it definitely wasn't for Pellegrini. I didn't see any of that personally. Uh, so I don't understand the confusion, though, from the young lad. But um, I don't think it was necessarily for him. Yeah. I um, think in, in any case, though, the message that he's saying is right. Yeah. You know, that um, Pellegrini, you know, what, however, whatever we make of it, whether we think we should have got more out of our time with Pellegrini than we did, um, you know, we have won trophies under him. Yeah. And the history books, I guess, will remember that. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of us think we could have achieved more. But ultimately... It was a weird one because I was sat there thinking, like, um, you know, there's been a lot of criticism about people not staying around afterwards. And there's two sides of the argument. And as usually when there's such extreme opinions, it tends to fall somewhere in the middle. Uh, um, yeah. I think the thing that people are from, from two very different angles there. But the, yes, maybe it would have been nice to see more people stay around with Pellegrini. But I think you have to consider the fact there's never been a real connection, I don't think, with Pellegrini from most fans. He's mm. a bit of a... Um, a bit of an apathetic man in general in terms of like he, he doesn't really elicit a strong emotional reaction because he's quite a subdued person isn't he and yeah. when you look at the difference uh, maybe a very similar kind of record to Mancini overall in terms of what he's won and what he's not but the difference really for Mancini I'm not saying this is a better manager but the difference is he's quite a passionate person so people relate to him a little bit more so he's drummed up a bit more support whereas Pellegrini never really did the PR thing did he he never really did that he kind of was quite quiet about it and in the end it's all been quite it's just happened and no one really seems to be bothered by it. And it's, I think everyone's looking forward to next season now as well. Yeah. I think if we think back to Mancini when he left, though, don't forget that there was a lot of negativity towards him as well. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I think I probably felt it was the right time for him to go as well. Yeah. But you kind of, um, you re-look and you re-imagine things a few years later down the line and we think we romanticise. Oh, definitely, Don't get yeah. me wrong, but Mancini was amazing. Winning was that title... You know, it took a it, it took a lot of effort. It become toxic, hadn't it? Though in the end. Yeah, at the end, you know, we we lost. You know, okay, we drew to at home to Real Madrid, and we drew and we lost by one goal to Real Madrid at their place. Under Mancini, we lost to Wigan in a cup final. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And that was a similar sort of thing. But the negativity was even stronger then. Yeah, yeah. So I think when we look back over Pellegrini. We'll say, especially when we're winning everything with Guardiola, mm. he says. Um, <laughs> then I think we'll, you know, we'll be happy to say, what well, he's a, go wrong a with transition that? manager. Yeah. yeah, someone will be digging this up. <laughs> so the, Tom made a good point um, there, and I think a lot of people um, saw, 
I'm, I saw where he was coming from. I think there's a very like, a lamed up thing as well in terms of years. Wait, we're all waiting for Pep next season. I, but it's probably not really helped him. It's not as if we weren't. If it's not as if they were. Um, we didn't know what was going to happen with Pellegrini. We were expecting something to happen. So there's been a lot of bit like everyone's just waiting for the season to end because it's yeah. really it's really petered out to nothing. So I, I think that's a big part of the reason why it was such a muted reaction at the end as well and the performances. So yeah, you know, people have voted with their feet, I guess. Which yeah, is, which we, you know, people are allowed to do what they want, and I know yeah. a lot of people were disappointed with that. What's your opinion anyway? Let us know below. I know this is one of the some of the strongest opinions we've seen all season yeah, around it's, this. Um, it's a big one. So, but do let us know, get involved in the argument, not discussion, that's <laughs> going on right down there right now. I'm sure it already is happening. Okay, guys, um, we'll move on to our next fan cam now. And this is coming from the other side, other extreme. This is Jason. He's become a bit of a regular on Blue Moon Rising TV. He's never one who's afraid to speak his mind. <laughs> um, let's, just, let's just watch it now. He's brought us three trophies, hasn't he? But, I mean... Like my mate was saying, we're, we're, we're bigger than them sort of trophies, these these Carling Cups and that. And that's all right. It's no good to sit, you know, I'm afraid. And the money we're spending, that Carling Cup's a load of <laughs> We should be going for... Like Wednesday night, was it? It was like we were 10th and we were just on the beach, just chilling out. I wouldn't mind a few players being sent off and got beat 3-0 and had a bit of fight about it. But it was just appalling. Yeah. Absolutely he had a, appalling. He had, um, he had a Roman Coke on the beach. Yeah, um, you blame him. Yes, you can. <laughs> um, yeah, so Jason always wants to speak his mind. Um, I always have to get the beeps out when Jason does it, when we're editing the fan cams. You just have him on a bank ready. Yeah, uh, yeah, Jason's just ready. Just get the beeps ready. Beep. Um, and he knows it as well. But yeah, so this is the other side and the other angle. Um, the, the Carling Cup, you know, we, so we won two Carling Cups. Capital we, One now. Yeah, whatever they've been well, rebranded they as. Yeah, Coca Cola, yeah. whatever it was. A milk was. cup from the <laughs> early 90s. Is that, yeah, yeah, so. We, but he's saying that we've won th two of these, but really they're not the trophies that City, a team like Manchester no. City, should be aiming for. It, what do you do? You agree I, with that I, line? I, 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 I get the whole. There's two sides of this. This whole we should be grateful because we've won trophies and whatever. But there's also the side that if um, if there was an equivalent trophy in Spain and there isn't, there's only one really domestic cup, the Copa del Rey. In so most countries, there there's only one. If there was only cup, that and they? Barcelona had only really won one second domestic cup uh, yeah. in two years, they wouldn't be happy. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it's because these clubs have, have got to such an elite level of success that they expect that they expect the greatest and the best. And I think we have to kind of get rid of that mentality a little bit, that that is okay. I mean, mm -hmm. it would have been okay if we'd battled really well in the leagues and we came close and we were valiantly undone in the Champions League semi-final after a thrilling game, yeah. which Ronaldo scored a wonder goal and knocked us out. I think we could all take that, you know, but that, yeah. that wasn't the case. It was it was weak, limp, insipid. It was just tentative. And at no point did you feel like there was a real kind of... A, desire um, I understand this argument and that's the most frustrating thing as a City fan watching something just fall away without what appears to be a fight they were there for the taking Real Madrid weren't they and yeah. you know people have said in the comments and I agree I think Leicester City would have beaten Real Madrid <laughs> they would uh, have had a shot at least it's funny to say um, because they would have taken it to them and they, the energy levels would, but, you know, they would have at least matched them. I think mean, Real Madrid are still a fantastic team, but we spoke oh, yeah. to, Paul spoke to Real Galacticos, which is a Real Madrid fan channel after the game, and even they were saying that that, that wasn't a good Real Madrid performance. No, 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 good that, team, that's why. I'm not saying Leicester City are a better team than Real Madrid, but, it's about but the on that night, and that's not I think they would have taken it to a great Real Madrid team at the moment. We, it's not we, a classic one, is it? We were, we were atrocious, mm. I would say, against Real Madrid, but Real Madrid were bad. Um, so, by, certainly by their standards. But uh, if we'd played like we had against Arsenal, I mean, against the Arsenal, yeah, yeah, we, were, we were good against but Arsenal. But this is, this is it, isn't it? So this season has been a tale of two cities, yeah. and um, unfortunately, the fact is that we didn't a we didn't win back-to-back -back league games from October to Mar April, was it, or May? And the infamous top eight stats. And as the well. top eight. In fact, we've only beaten Southampton in the top eight um, all season, and there was periods when because that top eight has been sh moving around and shaking around, that we didn't beat any of them in it, but it, as Southampton sort of came into it. Um, so it's not good enough for City. We've, we've, we seem to have had a bit of an inferiority complex. Yeah. Um, and then we've had some amazing away days in Europe as well, and Seville springs to mind especially. That, what, that's what hurts, isn't it? It's those things that build up and show what we should be, and that's what we should be, and given that everything we've spent. No one's expecting brilliant to perfection all the time, but they're just expecting to know that the team has done their very, very best. I'm not saying they don't care, I'm not saying that Pellegrini doesn't care, because they obviously do care, because the professional athletes at the high end of the game, you know, they'll mm. want to win 100%. But for whatever reason, that isn't their best, and something isn't right there. You know, mm -hmm. it is right clearly because City playing get the best as we saw for half an hour against Arsenal yesterday and then for another half an hour late in the game we play well we attack with energy pace direct uh, direct football loss of skill and endeavour 
and that's not what we've been served up this season in, in general. You yeah. know, apart from the odd moment aside, and look, you know, the results speak volumes. Really, the top eight thing. That's just atrocious. Yeah, genuinely and then, atrocious. And then you look at the other end of the table, and we drew with Aston Villa, and um, you know, which is ridiculous. And you know, they've been in, gifting points to everyone all season. Yeah, and one of the worst Premier League teams in recent. Memory. Yes, we won a trophy, which was great. It was nice, but that is. That should be the starter on a very luxurious yeah. menu, you know. It should yeah, be like, for, yeah. for one of a naff analogy, but it should be. That should be, and I think we need to get ahead of that around that. And that's why that's why someone like Guardiola is coming in. He isn't coming in to win one league and a capital one cup over three mm. years or yeah. two capital one cups. But that would not be success for Guardiola, and I guarantee you they want more than that. And hence why, uh, hence why he's coming in because we're not going to reach seventy points this season. And that's given this league, given how poor everyone's been this season, we've wasted an opportunity to. Probably rubber stamp a pretty easy year, yeah, and it should have been. It that. was probably possibly there for the taking, not to take anything away from Leicester because they've been amazing and they yeah. totally deserve it. But at the end of the day, we're you know this is just one our opinion. I know there's a lot of opinions out there who think that you know we should be grateful for where we are. Especially, I think there's a bit of romanticism because it's Pellegrini's last games as well. Yeah, and I think if we, we knew that well, he obviously. was staying for another year, people's tone might be a bit different. But hey, we wish him all the best, of course. We're glad for the trophies, don't get us wrong. But maybe Manchester City aspire to be a little bit a little bit more than that, that next rung at least. Yeah, hopefully yeah. that's where we're gonna get to. Okay, we're gonna look at the last fan <laughs> card. And this one's a familiar face. This guy is beautiful. Let me see if you, <laughs> Stephen, I'm interested to know if you agree with any of these points. Yeah, let's see. Now. And this is um this is young Stephen McInerney, who we interviewed. We found him after the game, struggling along. Uh, let's see what he had to say. No, that was um, that, that was basically Pellegrini's hair. three yeah. years summed up That's in one ninety-minute well, nutshell. I thought it was uh, it was like moments of brilliance, moments of uh, quality, skill, endeavour, work rate, followed it's, by it's just a mental frustration. Words. It was exactly. really frustrating to see what could have been, and there, there was a lot of good <laughs> in today's <laughs> game. But there was just the also moments where we lacked that kind of like you know the, the leadership of that company with the ring or the solidity. <laughs> well, just that, really a true belief that, yeah. in the end. They didn't see, didn't see a team um, with conviction in their own confidence. Like they were playing really well at that times, but there was sense. never really any <laughs> kind of uh, conviction in their own confidence. That, that was good. Straight and in life, I guess that's also, yeah, that's just Pellegrini in a nutshell for me. Words. A man with yeah. lots, of, uh, lots of ideas, but not necessarily all of them good, um, or Profound. not knowing how to kind of actually uh, get it to work. So it was just a typical city game, really, wasn't it? Okay, God, it's so weird to see yourself on camera, even though I've done this before. It's got to be weird for you, yeah. yeah. The, the thing, I picked that one, admittedly, and then <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to make Stephen look like an absolute self-obsessed guy. It's here. true, though. Um, do you want to take that? Yeah. And I think, I'm not sure if I actually included it on this clip, but the bit that I wanted was where <laughs> you say that it's some, was that at the beginning we were talking, that Pelle, it sums up Pellegrini's yeah. time at Manchester City, those 90 minutes. Perfectly. I thought it was a really nice expression. Yeah. So thanks. What did I you mean? What did you mean by that? <laughs> um, mean by I just felt like yesterday's game was largely good, and we played really well. But then once again, we were undone by a mistake that we'd seen coming, in because we've seen it a thousand times before. Like um, mm -hmm. there was a, there was a period yesterday during the game uh, where we were playing really well, we were on top and we were pressing. But then Arsenal started to press a little bit. They started to show a bit of form, and you thought. Can we just tighten this up because they're probably going to score? Because we've already mm. seen them score once. Yeah. And guess what happened? They scored. We didn't tighten it up and they ran through and scored. Decent goal, but you just want to see a manager who reacts to games and actually um, maybe Pellegrini needs to react to his own games live on a video. That's what we should do next. Play Pellegrini reacts to tactical decisions. To yeah. But you want to see a manager. <laughs> you want to see a manager who will realise that something isn't quite going well and then just take the sting out of the game for a little bit. And I thought the game yesterday was basically. Um, it showed two halves of his managerial kind of um, um, ability and what he's done over the three years here. Like a lot of good, but also sometimes really, really frustrating bads. You know, like a, yeah. like a frustrating bads. Pickably picked. Yeah. <laughs> this is more examples of your great wordplay. Straight we talking about yeah. all those bads. Um, what Top did you make bads. of um, Pellegrini's bads? <laughs> and he's <laughs> about his goods as well. No, but the I, I see where you, you're coming from. I think that um, you know, yeah, it, it, his in-game management. We got found out fairly early on, and the thing is, those Arsenal hit us on the break, and it, you kind of think. You know, there's so many games where we come away saying we were the better team, but we didn't win. And it's got to be a point where you think it can't be a coincidence that no. we're always the better team. And then you look at teams like United 
and they are seem to be always the worst team. <laughs> the winner yet at the moment. They keep winning. They're so informed. there's a there's some kind of a mentality thing there, and there's a there's an unwillingness to uh, that's adapt. That's what I meant as well. There was there wasn't really there wasn't a conviction in their own confidence because the team looked confident yesterday, but it was it's like they didn't really believe they were going to actually win. And the yeah. team played with a lot of energy, but there was no real belief or arrogance that they were actually going to pull through and get the three points. Yeah. It felt like it was very fragile that any second someone could go wrong and that would just be destroyed. I can't and believe I'm about to say this, but on FIFA, I often when I go ahead, <laughs> that seems to be always when I let another goal in because I just feel as though I'm going to give it away. There's no confidence. Yeah, I'm well, going to get it. beaten by some. But that's spotty the difference between year old. a team playing uh, with real belief in the team that's just uh, you know had some good happen and riding that wave for yeah. a second. But yeah, some, that, some amazing goals in that game though, weren't they? Like yeah. our goals were great. Giroud's was a bit crap, but the um, it's a good game. You know, Sanchez's was was quality. Uh, any other day and any other day of the season, I would have taken that. But I think most of us felt the same. The performance wasn't bad. The players clearly cared. I thought they tried really hard. A bit sloppy defensively, but it wasn't through a lack of you know trying. It wasn't mm-hmm. that. But it was just happened to be the most one of the most important games of the season. So that's why that result stunk. It, it yeah. wasn't because it was a bad result. Because uh, two all at Arsenal in the middle of January, you think, all right, that's not bad. Seems we played pretty well. We yeah. take that. Yeah. It wasn't about that for me. It was about. The reason the people weren't happy about it was because of what it meant, the consequences of it, as opposed to the actual result, I guess. Yeah, and Arsenal as well, they're not exactly in a rich vein of form. No. And so you'd expect that we'd, you know, they, they're a team, they come into our place, Drew had scored a fortress. Long. And, you know, there was so <laughs> long where we didn't let even teams score at the Etihad. Yeah. And that seems to be a long time gone, really, which is a shame. Um, right, that's the end of this segment, uh, Blue Moon Rising TV fan cam reactions. <laughs> let us know what you think of it. If you want to watch the full videos, then um, get onto our channel. They're all there. They're all in the, in the playlist. We'll link them as well so you can we'll, watch them we'll in the get, videos. We'll get them in the description as well. Let us know what you think. Which camp are you in? There's three different ones there. Stephen's sort of in the middle and two extremes on either side. Um, like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you pretty soon.